Welcome back, friends. Hey, a really interesting video for me today. I've got Jim here from Clean Tank, and he's basically going to give our black tank, our both of our gray tanks, and our water heater an enema slash power washing, like a, just a sincere clean. And I'm very interested to see this because we've never done this. And um, I've seen some videos before. It's it's quite interesting. Tell them what we're going to do today, Jim. Yeah, so today we're going to uh, use our hydrojet, our uh, high pressure water pump, to actually go into the tanks and uh, with 1500 PSI water, literally scrub them uh, as clean as they came from the factory when the, when the rig was built originally. Now that sounds awesome to me. I'm looking forward to, I think I can show you what comes out of here. I'm pretty sure I can. Um, we're going to. If YouTube flags me, whatever, that's fine. But um, yeah, it should be an interesting video. You guys stay tuned. Jim, what are we doing here? You've got it. You've got all your stuff out. This is some cool looking stuff. Um, so what's next? Okay, so of course, first I should say. First thing is we uh, emptied all the tanks. So obviously I like to start with empty tanks, but I like to see what comes out. As weird as that sounds, uh, that helps me to determine the health of the tank and uh, how the owner takes care of their rig. Um, after that, well, how um, did I, how did mine look? Uh, yours uh, actually looked pretty good. You just okay. got here yesterday, so there wasn't a lot right. in there. Correct. Um, but uh, I do like to start with uh, something in the tanks, although if customers uh, do end up emptying them, no big deal. <clears throat> we can kind of work from there as well. While I'm doing the cleaning, um, I will uh, be able to see uh, what comes out, obviously, and that'll help you to diagnose something. Now, I do have a question for you. Yes. What uh, Do you use a tank additive of any kind? Yes, we do. What do you use? Well, we used Happy Campers for a couple years, okay. and then recently we've been trying the uh, Unique RV Digest. Okay, so yeah. those are both uh, tank additives that are intended to break down things in your tank, correct? Correct. Okay, which you think would be a good idea, but actually, when you think about this, this is a holding system or holding tanks, not a septic system. So you really don't want anything in your tanks breaking down what's in there. Because what happens when you add um, something that has an enzyme or a biological or a chemical that actually break down, breaks down or dissolves what's in your tank, especially your black, what you get is a tank full of pancake batter. Mm. And that pancake batter actually is what uh, coats all the surfaces in there and most especially your sensors, which I'm guessing are probably not working. You know, we're weekenders, so we don't really don't check them that much. Okay. But yeah, I can check them now to see if they're working. Okay, but Let's uh, do that. but most people, uh, uh, you know, have the frustration of their sensors not working. And to be honest with you, it's the tank additive that you add uh, almost from the beginning of ownership that causes that situation. This, so this is interesting stuff. So uh, let me be clear from an owner's standpoint. Um, I flushed this thoroughly the last time I was here. And I've only been here for a full day. Um, maybe this is TMI, but no number twos to this point on this trip. So I feel like, as somebody that doesn't know yet, that this tank is pretty darn clean. Uh -huh. So when I flush it, I'll, 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 I'll uh, close it and let the black tank flush fill again. And I'll you let the gravity of the water to pull stuff out. And I'll do that a few times, yep. and it runs clear. So from my standpoint, I really think this thing is clear, is clean. But I'm afraid we're going to find out a little different here in just a minute. So let's go check my black tank sensor. All right, let's take a look at our sensors here. The black, it says it's a third full. We know it's empty. Um, gray one, same thing, a third full. Gray two says it's empty. So, um, so yeah, obviously the first sensor, it's coated with something. All right, Jim wants to make sure, just to be clear, he can't guarantee that he's going to get your sensors to work because there may be some wiring stuff. But, uh, but yeah, how often do you think you get them working? Uh, I'd say probably about nine out of ten times. That's pretty good. So mm -hmm. here's his little setup. You can see it's hooked up to my Volterra valve there. Uh, we're going to do business in. We're going to get see some fun stuff there. I kind of hope we do because it'll make a good video. And then I guess you're going to put the, the spray port 
right in that hole yep, and so, hook it up? Yep, so this is a, uh, a cleaning wand. It's attached to our uh, commercial water pump here, which actually ramps up to 1500 PSI, which is some pretty fantastic pressure. And a lot of customers always ask me whether this will damage the tank. It does not. Um, the pressure is, is pretty intense, um, and this uh, spray head will actually create a, a jet about two feet uh, back, which will do all the cleaning in there. Uh, but it's not so strong that it's going to punch a hole or anything in the, uh, in right. the tank. I've right. been doing this eight years and uh, never had any tank damage, so I'm pretty Very confident good. of that. Very cool. The, uh, the cleaning head here, uh, attached to this kind of green wand we call, is uh, specially designed. It's a miniature version of what a commercial uh, plumber might use to clear a septic line or uh, clean a, a really super clogged uh, big sewer pipe. Anyway, if, if you kind of look at it here, it's got little holes drilled in the back of it. And when the water pressure is applied, it creates a long, uh, about a two foot jet of high intensity water. Almost looks like a rocket. Yeah, it actually right. pulls itself up in there. In fact, it's so strong that I have to kind of control it. Otherwise, it likes to tie itself into a knot. Which oh, wow, okay. Very problematic. So. Very cool. Yeah. So let's turn the water on here. And let's get the pressure going. I may have turned that one. Oh, yeah, we gotta plug it up. <laughs> well, there's a look at the pressure that happens. Now, it's obviously not going back two feet because it's blocked by this three inch pipe, but you can see that it's pretty intense. Okay. And as soon as I let go, it'll pull itself right in there. Yeah. I look almost nervous about this. <laughs> oh, you can hear it going through the tank. Well, this is obviously your black tank. Right. And this is the one that is uh, super clean according to you, right? Right, right, yeah. So nothing should be coming out. Yeah, we've, we've definitely some residuals in there. Yeah, the reason that happens basically is uh, your tanks are long, flat boxes. Right. And they uh, they tilt uh, to the opening side. There's a three inch or inch and a half hole, depending on which tank it is, uh, where the waste comes out of. And uh, basically, like using gravity, the waste and the water come out. Uh, the problem is that especially in the black tank, collects in the corners on either side of your exit hole. Right. And over time, that just builds up more and more and more. It's something that your black tank flush can't get out. Obviously, you don't have any gray tank flushes. This rig, some, some good motor coaches do, but uh, uh, for the most part, RVs don't have a, pink, a flushing system on the gray tank. This is uh, kind of here, flopping around in there, and we're careful to control it so it doesn't uh, tie itself in a knot. And uh, what it's doing is it's shedding out everything that's in the tank. Boy, wow, that's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. satisfied that it's loosened everything up. I'm looking for a, a decrease in waste and a, a clearing of the color of the water that's coming out. Um, and generally when I'm doing the black tank, uh, depending on how bad it is, I'll clean this tank for anywhere from five minutes to a half an hour. Right. Uh, now your tank is not too bad, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, so, well, that makes me feel better than doing something. Yeah, I'm not going to be here for a half an hour cleaning this one out. Well, I, I think part of this is, you know, RVs are still a lot of times designed for that R, which is recreation. And I, now, a lot of people living in full time, but I think it helps that we dump ours. I mean, we rarely have anything sitting in it for more than two days. So. Yep. Well, it is important again to remember it's not a septic system. Right. Uh, it's not a flush and forget like you have at home. So you have to take care of it. And I guess the biggest lesson I would give to my customers is that they use a lot of water. Right. Um, obviously that's the most important thing you, you 
can do when using your, your RV is just to uh, use a lot of water. If you have, you're at a campground where you have the ability to get water, uh, and it's not metered like it might be in the southwest or in the western states, and the ability to get rid of it, so full hookups, you can use a lot of water, especially in the morning. Okay guys, so we're not sure how much you heard because of the pump, but just in short, Jim's telling us about toilet paper. As long as you don't use a huge big wad of it and you use a ton of water, uh, you're gonna be good to go. Obviously boondocking is a different situation. Um, our tank looks fairly good, so I'm glad to hear that. But uh, let me tell you, there was a lot more that came out of there than I was expecting. So um, so yeah, Jim, any, any additional tips <clears throat> Yeah, like crank the pump back up? Yeah, like Corey said, just use a lot of water in there. Uh, that's the most important thing to do uh, in any of your tanks. Um, I'm about to do the, uh, the bath gray tank, uh, which will be pretty clean. They always are. There's a lot of water that moves through there. And then after that, we're going to uh, kind of move uh, the wand up to the front of the rig where the galley gray tank is, which is always the worst. Uh, gray tanks always have a lot of uh, mold in them, and that's because it's a hot, wet environment. There are mold spores that are floating around, so uh, that typically is what I see when I do the gray tanks, especially the galley one. Very cool. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so good news. Brooke's going to love this. So our two gray tanks got an A from Jim, so that's I'm grateful for that. And our black tank got a B, which I'm actually very happy with that too. Um, I think, again, a lot of that is being recreational, just weekenders. Nothing really gets to sit in there. So you can see if you're seasonal or especially if you're full time, yeah, just this little bit that came out of mine it will multiply by tenfold. So um, you keep that in mind. Now he's going to go in. So he's done the cleaning. And now next for Jim is going, we're going to do the rinsing. All right, so now we're doing the rinsing part of the cleaning and Jim take it away man tell us what we're doing okay so after we do the cleaning with the hydro pump then we come back and we rinse out everything the pump didn't drive out and to do that we use uh, this little valve here it's called a flush king by Valterra and uh, this one's pretty well used um, but uh, this is something that every RVer should have in in their uh, toolkit here um, you can get these on Amazon Camping World other places like that um, the great thing about this, so here's what's happening here. So this goes in between the pipe that's coming out and your sewer hose. So it's this part right here. And it has a valve in here uh, that prevents things from going in and out. And it's got this water hose attachment uh, with a back check valve, which is very important. You want to make sure you're isolating or protecting the park's water supply. And then we add a water meter here. And what this does is it measures the amount of water going through and into the tanks. Now I looked up the specs on your RV. Your black tank is 39 gallons and your gray tanks are roughly around 36, 37 gallons. I meter in about 90% uh, of the total tank capacity. So I'm, right now I've got the black uh, tank valve open and we're going to turn on the water. Uh, this valve is open as well. This one's closed so water can't come out. And now the water is going to shoot up into the black tank. 
Now a lot of uh, RVers, almost everyone, has a, a flush system on their RV. And the question I get asked a lot of times is, well, why should I get something like this when I have the flush system? Flush system is a good rinser, but it's not a good cleaner. It doesn't put um, a high enough amount of water in there, and yeah, you could wait, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes for your tank to fill up. This will do it in just a few minutes, depending on the park pressure. Um, it also floods from the bottom rather than a gentle spray from the top or the side. And the other great thing about this is, once I'm done with the black tank, I can isolate that and I can open each of his uh, gray tanks individually, and I can actually do a rinsing of the gray tanks, which is something that 90% of RVs uh, can't do that. Right. Um, especially that galley tank that tends to have a lot of mold in it. Um, this is a great way to keep your tanks healthy. Um, so I always recommend for an RVer to get one of these Valterra Flush King valves and uh, keep that in their kit. Use it, um, maybe not every time you're emptying the tanks, but once a month, you know, once a trip, that kind of thing, if you're a full-timer, uh, you're going to get really familiar with this. Right. So we'll link that in the description box below. Um, I'll link Amazon, but go look, see if you can find it on sale, as always. So I do link the Amazon links, but yeah, go, sometimes you can find stuff on sale. So we're going to wait till this fills up, and then we'll show you what comes out. All right, guys, one last tank. Here's the galley. Let's see what rinse is out of here. So our tank's got an A from Jim, um, but he's definitely had a few Fs in his day. So um, even if you think you're taking good care of them, I, I guess it probably just goes along with how you use them too. Yeah. Like we are talking about, full-timers, part-timers, seasonal guys. Yep, people ask me how often uh, they should have this done. If you've never had it done, get it done at least once and we grade and we assess uh, how your tanks are. I actually keep uh, pretty detailed records on all of our customers. And uh, if you, if your tanks are, uh, you know, average or maybe a little below average, uh, then I teach you what you can do to improve that, but how to take care of them a little bit better. And then I recommend that you get them done about a year later as well, just so we have a, a comparison the second time. And if you're doing great then, every other year, maybe even every third year would be fine. But uh, definitely if you've never had it done, uh, even if it's a rig that's six months, a year old, I recommend that you get it done. Yeah, so this, you're, what you're seeing here is, is about, uh, we got this rig in late 2017. Like I said, I'm a pretty big stickler on rinsing it and using and filling up the tank and letting the gravity of the water come out. So uh, maybe I'll do a video on that. But I am glad that we've had this done. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit here about the water heater when we get done here with these three tanks. The uh, Jim and Clean Tank also provide that service. We're not going to do that in this video. We, I'll link that video uh, in the at the end of this video. I just literally uh, rinsed my, my water heater, so uh, we're not going to do that, but he's going to give us a few tips on that, so stick around for that. Uh, but yeah, this has been a, a fun video. All right, guys, we're going to finish off with a couple of tips for your water heater, and then we're going to go inside, and, and Jim's going to show us exactly how he wants us to use uh, the additive that he has. So yeah, go ahead, Jim. Okay, so there are basically two types of water heaters. Uh, in uh, most RVs. And I'm not talking about on-demand, I'm talking about a, a water heater unit itself. Uh, there's, uh, like this one, it is an Atwood, which uh, you can tell because it says Atwood on the label. Um, it also has a nylon plug, and it also tends to be smaller. Now, Atwood got bought by Dometic, so sometimes it'll say Dometic, but generally they're all the same uh, type of water heater. The other type, and those tend to be larger, is called a suburban water heater. And it's a bigger unit. Um, instead of a nylon plug, it's a little metal plug. Behind that metal plug is an anode rod. And an anode rod is a softer metal than the tank. And the reason you want that is water likes to react with metals. That's why iron rusts. And uh, in the tank here, the water is looking for something to react with. So in a suburban water heater, which has an anode rod, it's an aluminum anode rod inside of a steel tank. The aluminum is softer. That anode rod is a sacrifice. And uh, we put that in there because we'd rather put in a $20 rod than an $800 tank. Right. So we let the water kind of attack that rod and periodically with cleanings, we will replace it. The Atwood water heater, or Dometic, um, is an aluminum tank and uh, comes with a two-year warranty. It has a nylon plug. There is no anode rod in here currently. And uh, after the two-year warranty, um, you can put an anode rod in here. The manufacturer has some issues with that. 
uh, so don't do it before that two year period. Um, but I have noticed, almost without fail, that right around year four or five of your water heater, you'll start to get some corrosion in there. That's the time when you're doing your, your cleanings. If you see those kind of little white crystals coming out, that's the time you might want to consider putting in a, an anode rod, and that is a magnesium anode rod, because magnesium is softer than aluminum. And that's a four and a half inch one, and it replaces this uh, nylon nut here. Now, if you're a full timer, how often do you want to service and clean your water heater? Four times a year. If you're on any other kind of timer, a weekender, a part-timer, whatever, twice a year is sufficient. The way you do that is you take out whatever kind of nut, whether it's the nylon or the metal one that has an anode rod out, um, drain the water out of it, and then use an RV water heater wand uh, to kind of, which attaches to a garden hose, right. to, uh, to clean up in there. Yeah, we've done that video. Yep, and yep. get all the, uh, the sediment that's out of there. Just kind of make sure you're assessing it. You know, are there any kind of crystals coming out? How's the rust? Is there any rust? Um, with good care, uh, a water heater will literally outlast the RV that it's in. Right. A good 15, 20 years is, is not uncommon. Cool. Very good. Thank you for those tips. Okay, so as we mentioned, a gym has a, uh, here it is, Clean Tanks RV Holding Tank Solution. And uh, what different flavors do we have? <laughs> Actually, what different <laughs> scents do we have? Yep, so we use uh, Pine Sol in, uh, in making this. Uh, we're kind of a believer in the traditional. Um, it, pine Sol now comes in three flavors, like you right. say. Uh, pine, which smells an intense pine smell. And I'll let you know that Pine Sol hasn't used pine oil since 1982. So pine oil is very corrosive. Okay. Actu actually used in cancel, cancer treatment. And uh, you want to be careful if you're not going to use pine sol, pine sol and you use some other pine oil cleaner, just be very careful about it. But uh, it comes in the pine sol smell, which we have right here, the pine smell. And then there's a lemon, which is equally intense. And then there's the new purple lavender, which I don't think smells much like lavender or anything at all, really. But uh, it's a pretty purple color. And uh, we uh, give a bottle of this out with every one of our tank solutions or tank uh, services. And uh, we also provide the recipe for it uh, free. Uh, you can buy it from us, but to be honest with you, uh, it's just easier for you to make it on your own for us. Um, we appreciate that. Yeah, so on the bottle is the recipe for this size bottle. So it tells you how to make it. And then on our website, which Corey will uh, uh, link to, is yep. the recipe for a gallon bottle. You can make a gallon for about $5. So, Very cool. yeah, so this uh, tank solution you're going to put in all of your tanks. That's your waste tanks, not your fresh water. Right. And uh, so you're going to put it down your, uh, your toilet for your black tank, down your shower for that gray tank, and down the galley sink for that gray tank. Okay. Now, um, the amount that you put in here is anywhere from um, a half cup to a cup. And this rig's tanks are a little on the small side, so this is a half tank or a half cup uh uh, treatment and I've ticked off um, half cups here for Corey on this bottle so each tick is a half a cup so for instance the first one will go down his toilet the second one will go down his shower and the third one down his galley cool and you're gonna wanna uh, pour that into uh, each of those uh, 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 devices individually and then follow it with a couple of gallons of water it's always good to have water in there right um, when you're traveling um, a good three to five, even 10 gallons of water in all of your tanks, especially your black, is a good idea. When you uh, start uh, camping with your RV and the tanks are dry, a good three to five gallons in there with some of this tank solution is a good way to start. And then every time you empty it out, again, put the tank solution in there, a good three to five gallons in all of your tanks just to give them a good kind of fighting chance. Very good. Okay, I'm going to let you actually do this. So we have the uh, the man himself yeah is actually just because sometimes you have to dissolve stuff sometimes you have nope. to dilute yep so we're um, just dumping it in there right yeah then... so the only thing i would say is make sure you give it a shake um the kelgan sometimes likes likes to uh, precipitate out in the bottom okay. so just give it a good shake and again these are pre-marked at half cup right. so i just uh dump some down the toilet here till we get to about a half a cup maybe just a little bit more and uh so that's about a half a cup and then just let the uh Toilet water rinse down there for a few minutes. Um, I'm not going to stand here with it for that long, but right. that's how you do that. And then down the uh, shower is a great place to uh, get the next uh, gray tank. You can also do it down the sink, although some RVs have the bathroom sink 
uh, draining into the black tank, believe it or not, so I wouldn't do that. Um, and then the last one here, we're going to go over to the galley. And again, we're going to put uh, it down the galley sink. And you will want to... And we'll put some two put or three some, gallons of water in. Yeah, each put of these. some water in there and, and okay. make sure that gets it past the trap and make sure that uh, it gets down into the tank along with some water. Very good. Well, Jim, thank you so much. This no has problem. been an extraordinarily informative video. And again, I will link Jim's information below. Now, you said, you told me uh, either now or very soon, you guys will be nationwide, correct? Tell yes. us about where we can find you. Yep. So right now, um, uh, our company services mainly the middle of the United States, although we have a new dealer up in Michigan, so she's going to be helping us uh, in that area, um, Indiana, Ohio, uh, those states. We've got a new dealer coming in Florida, another one in Maryland, one in Oregon, and one down in Texas. So Very we're good. going to be a national company here within six months or so. Nice. And uh, we are uh, offering dealerships if anybody's interested, but certainly give us a call for uh, service. Good. And you guys do rallies. So, yeah, we'll, we'll post your schedules on your website, right? Yep. You got Sounds it. great, Jim. Thanks so much, man. Yep.